May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. This, this parable, I have to tell you, it always reminds me of one story. Um, I, I graduated from Atlantic High School up in Delray Beach, and my friend Sarah's father was a guidance counselor there, and he was also a Sunday school teacher at the Methodist Church, and he always told this story. He was in the grocery store one day, and it was one of those days when the lines were long, so, so the line had split to get to the cashier, and there was a woman coming from the right and a woman coming from the left, and they were arguing as to who was next when the line merged. And he was behind one of them or the other, and as he got tired of this, he said, well, I should go next. And they said, why? And he said, well, the Bible says the first shall be last and the last shall be first, so surely it's my turn. At which time they clearly, easily decided who was going next, and it wasn't him. But uh, that idea that we have a place and that other people shouldn't be treated as well as we are if they are behind us in some way is just part of our culture. It's part of who we are. It's part of who we understand the world to be. And uh, this parable that Jesus tells, all of Jesus' parables, by the way, are troublesome when you really look at them. But this one is, is troublesome and makes some people furious. I've heard of people who not only are furious when they hear it, but they prepare to be furious as soon as they know, they know it's coming up in the readings because they really hate it. In its more spiritual way of being read, it's usually read to mean that people who receive the gift of Christ who could come to faith late in life will receive the same reward in heaven as those who've, those who've lived their whole lives as Christians, those who were, like me, baptized from, from infancy. Um, and for many people, that's okay. I've been in churches where when somebody has turned their life around, even if it's fairly late, the whole church rejoices that they will now be part of the kingdom of heaven. It's, it's not universal. There are people who still think that if they've been Christian longer, they, God should like them better. But um, I don't think that's how God sees it. But I remember when I read this the first time after I was a manager at Office Depot, because I had a, a large department, uh, about 60 people, and when I heard it the next time after that, I thought, oh my goodness, if I did this in my department, that would be the end of productivity. If I paid the people who had been there for a week and, and did half the work the same amount of money as I paid people who had been there for five years and, and did two or three times the work, it would just be a disaster that all the people who worked hard would just stop working hard because didn't buy them anything. And that's how I think a lot of us read this. We read it as a reward, that, that God gives us what he gives us as a reward for our good behavior. So the better you are, the more God will give you, and the worse you are, well, watch out. But Jesus teaches about this kingdom of God, which is full of mercy. And in my experience of mercy, people are much happier when they are the recipients of mercy than when somebody else is, especially somebody they don't like, because it's, it kind of flies in the face of, of justice. You know, justice is I do a thing and I get the right reward for it. If I do good things, then I'm blessed and life is good and I get paid more and I have a bigger house and all the good things. And if I do bad things, well then I should probably go to jail or something to that effect. And, and we like to believe that that's somehow balanced and that our understanding of justice is correct and that God would agree with us as to who is good and who's bad. So the people we like should win elections. Uh, the people we like should uh, get good things. They should be promoted whatever, wherever you are in your life. Um, and the people who have not treated us well should not. But in this story, there's another piece that we really need to look at. The workers who worked an hour had been wanting to work all day. They had been in the marketplace all day long trying to get work, trying to feed their families, trying to make sure that they had money for where they live, um, trying to make sure that they could, they could exist, but no one had hired them because society isn't fair and it's not balanced. And I'm told that in ancient days that a daily wage was really what you needed to live today. Uh, there, there are places in the Bible where it says that Everybody's paid at the end of every day because you need your money today. They don't have credit cards. 
You need your money today to pay for your bills today. If you're going to get food today, you have to pay the grocer now. And if you didn't get a full daily wage, you couldn't eat. You couldn't do all the things your family needed you to do. So the daily wage wasn't a whole lot of money. It was just what you needed to survive. And if only the people who worked all day got it, then you're saying some people are not going to be fed. Some people are not going to have a place to sleep. Some people are not going to get their cloak back that they've given in, in, uh, in pledge for something. And they're going to be cold. Because things aren't balanced and fair. And for someone to be paid more than you might think that they deserve might only be enough to take care of their basic needs. Uh, one of the things that I think is clear is the church needs to be on the side of the people who only worked an hour and the people who got the daily wage who hadn't earned it but to whom God was merciful. That we, as, as followers of Jesus, as we as people who have accepted God's mercy to us, must be the people who offer and extend mercy to other people. And this is hard stuff. No, but it, it's not easy. It's, uh, from the time you're small, you start claiming that things aren't fair. I mean, if you've ever been around small children, that fair is one of their favorite words. You know, this isn't fair. And, and they're right. They're right all the time. Whether we are in a system of justice, it won't be fair. Or in a system of mercy, it won't be fair. And God and Jesus are on the side of mercy. I am grateful for the things that have happened to me and for the times that I have existed in God's mercy. Uh, I'll, I'll end with one little story that I thought was kind of funny. Somebody was uh, talking about a woman who was, who was having a really hard time, and she was just barely getting by, but by mercy. And somebody asked her how she was doing, and she said, well, God has given me manna, and that's good, but I'm really tired of manna. I'm really tired of having to live on to mercy. I'm really tired of having to depend. Because we all want to be self-sufficient, don't we? We all want to be able to do our own things. But when we need mercy, may we find it. When we need God's love and care and providence, may it be there for us. And may the church be an instrument of that. And may all of its members reflect that every day. Amen.